Right, let's do some more arithmetic modulo 5. So we're going to do arithmetic mod 5. Remember, what this means is we've put some really funny glasses on so that wherever we look in the world, when we see numbers, we don't see all the number, we only see the remainder after dividing by 5. So, for example, we know that 3 is going to be congruent to 8 mod 5, because if you try and divide 8 by 5, then the remainder you get afterwards will be 3. And so 6 will be congruent to 1 mod 5, and 11 will also be congruent to 1 mod 5. And the general rule is that A is congruent to B, mod 5, if and only if the difference between A and B is divisible by 5. So we say B minus A is divisible by 5. And we sometimes write that like this. 5 divides B minus A, which we say 5 divides B minus A. That's the same as saying B minus A is divisible by 5. So if we do arithmetic in this way, we might start wondering whether some of our ordinary rules of arithmetic and equations are still true. So what kind of things do we know about ordinary equations? Well, equations, first of all, we do know that if we add the same amount to both sides, it's still true. We know that if we multiply both sides by the same amount, it's still true. We know that if we divide both sides by the same amount, it's still true. So let's take a look at those things and see if they're still true in our new world that's got funny glasses on. So for example, if we have, if x is congruent to y, mod 5, do we have a plus x is congruent to a plus y mod 5. Take a second to see if you can think about that. Have you thought about it? Well, let's try using this definition. So what we have to show, so the answer I'll tell you now is yes. Let's prove it carefully. We need to show... that if, so what does this mean? This means that 5 divides y minus x. If 5 divides y minus x, then, let me write it down here, then 5 divides, well, what does that mean? We have to do this side minus that side. So that's a plus y minus a plus x. But a plus x, whoops, a plus y minus a plus x simply equals y minus x. So this condition is exactly the same as this condition. So this is definitely true. If this is true, then this is definitely, definitely true. Um, so we're done. So now let's try the same for multiplication. Perhaps I'll write this up again, but a bit smaller up here. So A congruent to B mod 5 means that 5 divides B minus A. OK, so now let's try x is congruent to y, mod 5. Now we can multiply both sides by a. We get ax multiplied by ay congruent to, y, uh, congruent to ay, mod 5. So let's prove that. Well, why don't you see if you can do it first in exactly the same way as this one was done. Have you had a go? So let's try it. What do we need to show? So suppose, suppose that this is true. So again, that means that 5 divides y minus x. 
Then we need to show we need to show this second thing, right? We need to show that phi divides a y minus a x. But what is a y minus a x? That's the same as a times y minus x. Now, if y minus x is divisible by 5, then definitely a times y minus x must be divisible by 5. Because another way of putting this is that y minus x is a multiple of 5. Now, if you, multiple, if you take a multiple of 5 and multiply it by something, it's clearly still going to be a multiple of 5. Okay. So, right, and clearly... If phi divides y minus x, then phi divides a times y minus x. So we're done. So we can certainly add the same thing to both sides, and we can multiply the same thing by the, uh, both sides by the same thing. So what about division? Well. Division doesn't really make sense in the integers mod 5, does it? Because when you divide, would you get fractions out? What does that mean? Hmm, maybe a bit later on we'll think about what division really means. But for now, let's think about whether we could have done this with different funny glasses on, mod any other number. Supposing instead of doing it mod 5, we'd done it mod 6. Would it still have worked? Well, yeah, everything would still have worked. We didn't really use any special properties about 5, did we? So in fact, we could do this mod any n that we wanted, and all this would still be true. So later on, we'll see that there are some things that, where, when it times, it really matters which n that you're doing. But for just this adding to both sides and multiplying by both sides, it doesn't matter. But next time, we'll have a look at some simultaneous equations.